Okay, this is GMAX 1.2 for the beginning modeler, video number 10. This is a continuation of video number 9, building the fuselage. This is part 2. Uh, the objective uh, in this two-part series is create the basic fuselage shape using splines. Okay, where we left off last time, we uh, created uh, the splines necessary to, uh, to the cross-sections and we had started positioning them on the fuselage and if you look here we had A, B, C and D done and we have the remainder sitting here waiting to be moved into position. Uh, before I jump into that I just wanted to mention something that I left out at the beginning of the last. If you zero if zoom in on this uh, circle and just uh, drop down to mesh settings. If you, you notice the thickness here, here is 0 0.01. I've got six sides and the display mesh. Uh, what these settings are about is when you go to draw these lines against your three view cross sections, uh, if you're not displaying the mesh here, all you get is this very thin white line. And it's very difficult to see when you're drawing these, uh, using these splines to, to draw against your cross sections. So this, these mesh settings allow you to size these up so they can be seen. You can keep the sides small like six, that's fine. And I found that for this particular three view, 0 0.01 meters in thickness was sufficient to be able to see and yet not overwhelm the line you're drawing against. These can be scaled up or down, make these as big or small as you want. It has no bearing on the geometry you're going to create. It's really here to help you see what you're doing as you're uh, building these cross sections with splines or circles or what have you. So I just wanted to mention that before we get back down to business. So let's go back to the left view and zoom in with the E key. And let's get in here a little tighter where we can see what's going on. Okay, we've got A, B, and C cross sections positioned. Uh, one other thing, uh, step I guess I left out, it can be done at the end here, but we're going to want to move all these splines up because uh, of, this, of uh, how these side views and rear view are setting. It's not to the GMAX line, but to the center line of the fuselage. Let's go ahead and move the rest of these, and then we'll move them all at one time uh, up to where they need to be. Okay, we've got D moved, and let's go pick up E and E top. And we'll move that into place right there. Maybe a little, a little better. That's good. And then we'll go pick up F and move it into position. And we'll pick up the G circle and move it back here in position. And then we'll pick up the final H circle and move it into position. So now we have all of the all of the uh, <coughs> circles that we drew for, against the cross sections uh, in position on the y-axis along the fuselage. Now that we have that done, we can go ahead and select all of them and go to your front uh, front looking back, which is the K key. And zoom in on that. So now you can see that these are all low. And I failed to do that uh, earlier, but this is fine. Do it now. Doesn't matter. So we'll move these up so that the fuselage shapes are lined up in the back here, and that the uh, canopy shaped. Uh, this is the rear one, so you can't tell much by it. But you can go by the front. The front one looks a little high. Let's pull that down a little bit. All right. Now let's go back to the side view and see how that looks and how these match up with with uh, with the side view drawing. Pretty good, right? You can probably tweak a couple of them here. And that's fine. Uh, like F can go up a smidgen. Let's zoom in here. And let's see. Let's see. 
Yeah, it's close enough for government work right now. Sorry I said that. Move this up a tad. Actually, it looks a little large, but we'll leave it right there. Okay, now that we have all those in position, lined up with the fuselage uh, in both directions, we are ready to uh, create some mesh. So let's um, select everything here and hide unselected. I want to get rid of the calibration box, get it out of our face for a minute. Hide unselected. All right. Now what we're ready to do is add some cross sections and surface modifiers. So uh, we're going to remove the canopy piece. We'll pick up on that later. We want to do it separate. Do that separately since it's a separate object. So we're going to hide them. Okay. Then let's go to the very front. We're going to start here and work our way back. And what we do in order to uh, create cross sections and surface we need to do this in a sequence front to back in one direction do not skip do not get out of sequence otherwise it'll screw up the mesh so the first thing we want to do is go to the modify panel and convert this to an edit spline all right that's done now that's all you have to do really I think let's see if there's anything else down here that's all you have to do there. Now what we're ready to do is attach each of these splines to that to make it one object. And you have to do that in sequence. So uh, put your cursor on each one in sequence and attach it to the front one. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Click off that. Now you'll see that we only have one object here. So all of these cross sections are part of now of this front object. But with that done, we can go straight to uh, the modify panel and then drop down and uh, lay in cross sections. Okay, now you can see that all the cross sections, cross sections have been connected through the cross section modifier. And we're going to leave the spline options on linear there's I mean we could go with uh, with a curvature and let it smooth these but you don't want to do that and uh, the reason is this is a complete front and rear and we don't want it curving around the, the fronts to smooth those curves because we have more to add front and rear so once we have the cross section in and then we're ready for a surface modifier now ain't that pretty <laughs> sweet huh that's what you get when you come down to a threshold and you just change that one meter to zero and boom there's your fuselage cool we're on a roll here we're on a start okay now look at all these cross sections that added in I haven't found a, a way uh, to stop this from happening in this process but I'll show you how to get rid of the unnecessary ones uh, a little later on Okay, so now we have a fuselage skinned, and let's go back to the left side, and let's uh, unhide the, uh, unhide by name, box one, and then so that we can better see this with the uh, fuselage selected, let's go down to display properties see through now uh, I see, I see you see this right here I forgot to uh, forgot to do something right here remove interior patches you put in the surface modifier if you don't use this remove interior patches it's going to put a cross-section patch kind of like a uh, bulkhead on each of the cross sections that we added <clears throat> so we just want to click that and that removes those cross sections otherwise you're going to have to remove them manually after you convert this to mesh and speaking of that what do, how do we do that well at this point you've got the mesh ready and you're happy with it assuming you're happy with it I mean that looks uh, pretty good we got something here we can work with nice and smooth and round and 
what have you. And oh, by the way, just so you can see this, if that's the smoothest you're comfortable with, you can go for it. Otherwise, you can come over here to the right bottom in Patch Topology, and you can change the steps. You can go Viewer. I mean, that may be okay for AI or graph, but not certain, certainly not one that uh, I want to use normally. Six looks good. What six gives you? It, this is six steps per quadrant. So that gives you four times six is 24 sides, which is a good smooth shape for a fuselage. And if you go much higher than that, it just gets harder to work with, and you're really ramping up on your poly count. So just have to find a nice, comfortable one. You can either go five for a 20-sided, or you can go six for a for a 24-sided. There's one benefit I like. Well, they're both okay. So six is what I'm going to lay in here. I like that. Okay, now in order to convert this to mesh, the first thing you have to do is collapse the stack. So I don't think we can add a modifier. We, oops, I don't think there's anything to convert here. No, you have to collapse it. You have to collapse the stack first. So now it automatically creates an edit, editable patch. We're going to convert that to editable poly. Okay, and once you've got editable poly, you can then go about making all the changes you want to this thing. The first thing we're going to do is change this to change the smoothing on this to clear it and all is smooth. And that takes the uh, bad smoothing off the ends here. And uh, the second thing I'm going to do, since we don't need it right now, is clear that selection. And then I'm going to select each of these ends I want to get rid of those end polys because they're un I don't want all that ugliness there. And <clears throat> notice that if you rotate around here, you can see all these polys selected. I want to get rid of that, so uh, I'm going to select an easy way to do this rather than individually selecting all those polys is to uh, select this whole group and then hold down your your uh, control or alt key and deselect these and deselect the oops I missed these so what we have left then is that the end polys are still selected we're just going to delete them and all the isolated vertices so now we have those ends open but we're going to come right back oops, and select border and cap and find the cap here. Okay, we've added that poly back. Now it's only one poly, not a gazillion of them like we had before. We'll select um, this border. And we're going to cap it. Oops, must have hit something wrong here. Cap it. There you go. So now we're back in business. We've got polys where we need them. All right. So there's your. Uh, your fuselage and uh, the next step then will be <coughs> improving on these shapes to match up with fuselage lines and it looks like we can probably adjust well, that's on the center line there so we just need to improve on these shapes to match up with the uh, fuselage lines up and down the body and we're going to then um, eliminate some of these cross sections that are in here needlessly. We we'll use a few of them in order to maintain a good curvature on the uh, on the fuselage where we need it. <coughs> but uh, most, uh, most of them are going to have to go. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Thank you very much. This is where we've been uh, working to get to, creating uh, real geometry to get this fuselage started. Well, we got it started. Now uh, it just takes a little effort to uh, finalize the shape, build the nose uh, up front, and to uh, we'll extrude both of these out to build more cross sections, and then we'll shape and fit to, to both ends so that we have uh, a good curvature all up and down here, and clean up this mesh, and uh, we'll be in good shape. 
All right. Well, thanks for hanging in here.